Hey guys, welcome back to Pepper Geek. Today, I'm gonna show you how I turned this, a wide mouth ball jar, into this, a ready to use hydroponic grow system. So hydroponics are really cool. Basically, it's a soil free setup that allows you to grow any type of plant that you want. Uh, we're of course gonna be growing peppers, but you could grow leafy greens, you could grow herbs, you could grow tomatoes. You can pretty much grow anything as long as you provide the nutrition that the plants need through the water. In a later video, we're gonna chronicle this entire experience growing two pepper plants out in these ball jars. And we're also gonna be crossbreeding those varieties and creating a new pepper. So don't miss it. Please subscribe to our channel. We would love to have you along for the ride. We went with the deep water culture or water culture method, which provides air through an air stone and an air pump uh, from the bottom of this reservoir. It basically provides air bubbles to the root system from beneath. If you're just growing leafy greens or herbs, I really wouldn't worry about doing this. You can go with the Kratky method, um, which basically eliminates the air pump altogether. But we thought it would be cool to use basically everyday items. These are a couple of dollars. You can find these all over the place. Uh, a little bit of extra plastic. So instead of recycling your plastic, you can just repurpose it for this and a couple of extra things that you'll probably need to pick up either at a local garden center or online. And we'll leave links down below for any of the items in case you need them. Now, before we prepare and assemble everything, we need to paint the jars because we don't want light to be able to penetrate the side of the glass. That can cause algae growth uh, and you really don't want that. If you don't wanna paint, you can do whatever you want to block out the light. Some people will use a brown paper bag and elastic bands to keep out the light or you could just use duct tape, but we thought this would be sort of a better aesthetic appeal to our indoor garden, and we're pretty happy with how it came out. Okay, and with all that said, let's get started on the transformation process, and we'll start out with the supplies that you'll need. One, you'll need some wide mouth ball jars. I'm using full quart size wide mouth ball jars. You'll need a full lid, both the seal and the ring. You'll need some spare thin plastic. I got this from a food item. You'll need some sharp scissors, to cut through the plastic, and you'll need two inch net pots. These you can get at your local nursery or online. And lastly, you'll need some sort of all purpose spray paint. I chose a yellow color because I, I want it to kind of look nice. Uh, you could use black, that would block out more of the light. Okay, so first things first, we wanna sterilize our ball jars, bring them to a boil in a large pot and let them boil for about 10 minutes with the lids inside as well. And once that's done, take them out and let them cool. So the first thing we wanna do is make the custom net pot fixture that will fit snugly on the top of your ball jar. So this is sort of the finished product and that will go inside of the ball jar lid rings and we can seal it on top of our jars. So in order to make this plastic ring, we're going to start with a piece of plastic. I'm sure you can find some spare plastic lying around. If you can't, good for you, but. <laughs> so we're gonna start by using the ball jar lid seals to trace uh, our outer circle on the plastic using a Sharpie. So we'll start by doing that. Just keep it firmly in place and trace as close as you can to the edge of the circle. So there we go. And we'll use our net pot to trace a circle inside of that circle. That needs to be slightly smaller than the lid of the net pot. So we're gonna trace the outside of the net pot. Now this part's important. We're going to start by cutting the inner circle and we gotta be really careful with that one. We wanna cut slightly toward the inside. You wanna err on the side of smaller rather than larger because if you cut the hole too big, the net pot's just gonna fall right through. So first we're gonna bend this in half and try to keep it perfectly on the circle and give it a little crease. And then we're gonna cut just about an eighth of an inch toward the inside of this circle. Try to cut maybe right there and trace all along the inside of the circle. If it's too small, we can always cut it larger, but if it's too big, we have to start over, so. Uncrease it. So now let's give it a test. There we go. Doesn't fall through, that's good. So next, we're just going to cut the outer circle, and on this one, you can just kind of stick right to the line. Um, because if you cut this one too big, it's not gonna fit inside of this ring. And now with everything properly cut, all that's left to do is assemble your net pot. That goes like that, in there, this, 
hangs over the inside of the ball jar and then you can screw down the lid and keep it in place. Now for the painting process, we just want to tape off the lip of each of the jars with some masking tape just so that we don't paint the top. The metal ring will be covering this part anyway, so we don't need to paint that part. If you really want to keep it simple, you don't have to use spray paint. You can just use some tape uh, or anything to block out light, but you want to make sure that this entire portion of the jar is completely covered. We're just going to flip them upside down like this and paint outdoors and we'll bring it back inside once it's fully dried. Okay, so it's a couple days later and the painting process is done. With just the yellow color, there was some light penetration, so I had to paint with black before I painted with yellow. I painted one of the rings black and one of the rings yellow, just to see if there's any difference in the temperature of the water. We'll see. Now since we're doing the water culture method, I used a simple hole punch just to punch a hole through our plastic rings and made sure that it was fully accessible with the metal ring in place. So just a quick note on the DWC method. This here is an air stone. It's basically a porous piece of rock that allows air to flow through it and it creates tiny bubbles. This rock will sit at the very base of our jars and it'll be connected via a tube. And on the other end of the tube is an air pump, which is this right here. And this will run constantly. It goes through this little backstop just in case you lose power. You don't want any of the water to siphon back into this and ruin your device. Uh, but that's basically it. It's just pumping air through the tubes into these air stones and providing bubbles to the root system of your plants. However, I also mentioned another method that omits this practice entirely called the Kratky method. And basically, you're just eliminating the entire air pump so you wouldn't punch your holes, you wouldn't buy any of this stuff, and you would just make sure that the water level stays below uh, the bottom of your net pots. So by leaving a little bit of room below your net pot and the water level, you're allowing the root system to gather oxygen from there instead of through the air bubbles from your air stone. This method works for peppers, but we saw some pretty compelling research online, and I'll link the video to it in the description, that basically showed how much slower peppers will grow without an air stone. The cracky method is clearly a more simple setup, and it kind of would make more sense. And I was originally intending to do the Kratky method, but after seeing that research, I decided to just go with the DWC method and provide the air bubbles since we already had a pump. Now with this assembled, all that's left to do is to insert our air stone, and we're just gonna feed the tubing through the punched hole down into the jar and connect the air stone securely and allow the rock to fall all the way to the bottom of the jar. Now I used a little splitter to split the air pump's supply of air between our two jars and put the backflow valve before this splitter so that hopefully each of those air stones will get an equal supply of air pressure from our pump. And that's it, we're ready to start planting our seeds. In the next video, we're gonna be germinating seeds in rock wool cubes and we'll also be talking about mixing nutrients and getting everything set up to start our grow. And head over to peppergeek.com where we have more information about these methods that we're doing. We're gonna be kind of chronicling the whole experience as we go along there. And you can sign up for our weekly newsletter. We'll also be providing updates and pictures and things like that there. So thank you for watching.